What's happening everybody? I appreciate you tuning back in, coming back to see what we're doing on Mr. Shafrat's JKU. And it's the part that I've been probably dreading the most. And let me show you why. Now you can see from this angle, it doesn't look that bad. You can see the warpage in the door, which isn't a big deal. I'm pretty sure I can get that out. And this is the part though. It's hard to catch the shadows right. But this concaves, this panel is not supposed to be up under the door. As you can see, it's pushed in pretty violently. Not exactly sure what happened in the accident, but it happened. So what I need to do is fix this and get it back to a level kind of uh, location so that the moto belt slider can go on there because it uses the nut search to go right here. And of course, then it attaches underneath. So I need to straighten this out so we can do this. Again, here's a little spot that isn't that bad. What I could probably do here is weld on a bolt, and then I have a slide hammer that we use for other things. We'll just turn that on, hammer that out a little bit, smooth it out, not a big deal. Because again, a lot of this will be hidden once we get the slider on. The problem is I have to be able to get the slider on. So my idea is, Open this door up so you can see. Get me a chair. I'm getting fat and lazy. My idea is to kind of do what I did back in the back corner there. Get all this plastic out of the way. We'll come up to the factory roll bar. After we cut this out, so I'll probably lay a piece of masking tape right across here, all the way across. And then we will Use a little sawzall, or actually not a sawzall. We're gonna use a, a cutoff wheel, come all the way across and cut this bit out. This is just an angle here. I haven't took my angle finder to uh, see what I got. I know it's kind of hard to see. The lighting's not the greatest. You can kind of see it there. But cut that out. You can see here that the door is sticking out slightly. I'm not sure if that's because of the warpage in the door or if it's because this is pushed in. This feels pushed into me. So I'm thinking if I cut this here, I can then pull this lip out some, get it to blend better. Probably some in the door because I can feel the door, the bottom lips bubbled out as well. But we'll get all this worked out. This is probably gonna take me more than a day to do. And then we can finish putting on our Moto Built slider. Um, if you've seen the last video, you know that I didn't put this, uh, this side on. I didn't even refer to this side really for the most part because there's a lot of work to be done here, as you can see. Uh, we're going to get through it. We're going to get it done. And we're going to make it look like, for the most part, that it never even happened. So, without further ado, let's get started. So we have our upright cut done and our cut across. Now I stopped just here because I'm starting to rethink how I want to do this. I, I can always, you know, go further if I want, but trying to take it back, it's that's a little difficult. Yeah, I could weld it up and you know if something went wrong and try to smooth it all out. But now if I just stop here, um, I'm I'm thinking I might be able to come back maybe a little further, come down, and I can actually just take a bar or some type of uh, you know leverage and kind of massage some of this out instead of doing this one big long piece. We'll see. I'll see what I can do and then of course we'll set the the moto built uh, slider up here. I believe it's the Crusher series. But anyway, set it up here. Get a better idea of what needs to go where. Try to pull this out more or is it good enough to where we can go ahead and mount it up. So we'll get all this cut out again. Port it, we'll open the door up, pour the jack, push it down, get that, that bow kind of out of this, and we'll see where we're at after that. Probably gonna cut this out real quick, and then we will uh, open the door up and get the port jack in there. Let's do it. All right, we have our setup done up to the roll bar. Little Jimmy Jack, Porter Jack, whatever you want to call it, some type of jack set up. So piece of thick, I think it's like two by two box tubing. Um, 
set up here to distribute the load. Plus, when it gets here, it'll kind of stop me. I'll know that uh, don't need to go much further. Probably have to try to go a little bit further than this will allow us. So you might have to take it out and just use the foot here to push down. Just because, you know, like when you're bending tube, you always have that spring back. So there'll probably be some spring back. But I went ahead and bent this lip out, which you'll be able to see better when I get all this done. Went ahead, did the prep work. Didn't want to bore y'all with that. Welded a few of the bolts into the spots that I think I'm going to need to be able to use the, the slide hammer there. So we're going to get set up now that all this is done. Throw the camera on. I'm going to stop talking. And we're going to try to straighten all this up. Get ready for the slider. Here we go. All right, I am trying to hurry up because I'm going up to the junkyard. Matter of fact, I'm recording this on my phone. There's a bunch of cloud cover coming in. We've had showers on and off throughout the day and it is, well, it's uh, quite, quite humid out right now. The air is very, very heavy and it doesn't help that I'm a fat kid. But I found a panel I think is gonna work. Hold tight. Here we go. Oh. Yeah. We're gonna cut that out of there. All right, there we are. That is roughly the length we're gonna need. And the height I'll have to trim down once I get it back down the shop. I normally wouldn't cut up a door, but this is an old Mac cab over. Um, it wasn't even, yeah, it, it wasn't popular. So I highly doubt, well, I say that knowing my luck, somebody's gonna call tomorrow on Monday saying, yeah, I need a door for a Mac, blah, blah, blah. You know, one of them little lightweight. Ooh, that's so hot, man. Uh, cab overs. Yeah, that's going to be my luck. But anyway, that's what I did. Chop that out. We'll get it back down to the shop. Get it cut exactly to size. Clean it up. And uh, get the brake in it. Ooh. Ew, I got poopy I got to get off. That sucks. All right, then. This is what it is. Cool. You see them dark clouds back here for me. We're going to get some poor precipitation here shortly, which it feels like it by the amount of humidity that is making me sweat. A lot. Ugh. Anyway, got the panel cut off. So we're going to prep it, get it ready, get it cut to size, a lot closer to size anyway, and then put a little angle in the dangle, you know what I'm saying? And start tack welding it in. Then we have the basic shape of our piece. It's going to match. Now there's a hole back here. The reason that is, is our flange right there is still back there. And what we're going to do to add some strength and some rigidity, rigidity, we're going to pull this out some more. Excuse me, sorry, camera angle. We're going to pull this out some more. That way we can tie that in right there. Now, I could have done this in one piece probably and just spot weld it. But I still might do that. Because I have the old piece that originally came out of there, we're going to put it back in. I might just do one piece and drill some holes and try to pull this out and spot weld it. But doing it this way allows me to manipulate it a little more. So that's what we're going for. But so far, that is matching up pretty good. Pretty good. A little more tweaking. We'll be good to go. All right, so we got our panel made up here. Uh, one handed. It's not going to fit perfectly since I'm trying to mate it up one hand but you can see eh, there we go eh. anyway so we're gonna have a few holes to fill in that guy there in the corner is my fault this right here though that gap right there that was you know the metal was twisted up under it was all bent down if you remember before so it's just a gap we're gonna have to fill in then we'll come back in, we'll tie it all together there. That piece that's, that's underneath there, we'll bend it back out some more actually before we tack this into place. Then we'll start tacking this all into place. All into place.
All right, I don't know where we left off. It's been months, really, honestly, yes. And as most of you know by now, we didn't make it the trail hero. The Jeep didn't make it. I didn't even make it solo. Like, nobody on my end made it. Yeah, not good. Partially my fault. Um, I'll blame the economy on some of it, but only just a little bit. I take personal responsibility. My fault as to why myself and the ShopRite family didn't make it. However, that's neither here nor there because it's in the past. So moving forward, right? There's always next year. I need to get this done. As you can see where I've left off, there is still a slight, ever so slight, you can see that on camera, gap right there in that rocker. I got most of it out by cutting the section out making my own little roll um, with a brake, just a little hand brake, just making a roll with it. You can make a roll with a brake. Very subtle, time consuming, but it can be done. Anyway, did that, it's welded in, brain has got on, it's rusted. So what we're gonna do is do a quick buff, pull this slider, pull the slider back off, and we're actually gonna hook a come along to this here giant forklift, or actually it's a chain come along. Um, but that's enough talk. All right, so I didn't want to bore y'all with the whole time lapse and setup, but let me show you what we've done here. So, chain come along, did a little uh, ingenuity, some metal plate. These are brake clevises off of, uh, you know, air brake chamber. Hooked in, well, we're not going to show that, not so well. And we got these different spots so we can pull from over to this big heavy forklift. And that's what we're going to do. All right, so that did not go as well as I had hoped. It did come out some. It actually, I think, bulged more than anything right where this is. Um, and as a matter of fact, when I moved the, the forklift back, it started to crack this weld a little bit, which is to be expected. It's thin metal. Try not to throw too much heat into it so you don't burn through it. You know, and you don't want to catch on fire the insulation and all that fun stuff in there. Anyway, so it's come some. Came out some, but I don't know if it's gonna be good enough. But when I get all this cut off, we'll see what happens, see if it's straight enough to mount this thing in there, throw some paint on it if it is, let that set up, and then we'll be able to mount the other Moto Bill slider finally after months. Mm, that's stuck on there pretty good. Time for the old cutoff wheel. All right. That is a lot better than what it was. I know it's hard to see, but I, trust me, that is a lot better. So all that effort I went through wasn't for nothing. It wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, but again, it wasn't for nothing. So we'll take it. We'll take it as a win, take it where we can get it. Again, most of that's gonna be hidden, obviously, under our motor built rocker, our step here. So who cares, right? Um, unless somebody really wants to take the thing back apart and really pick it apart Most people are never going to know unless they watch this video. There we go So now we got to drill some holes get this thing up on there and this part will finally be done Praise God
Wow. Um, it's on there, finally, after I don't know how many months. Anyway, let's look at it. Yeah. There she be. It isn't perfect. There's a slight gap right here. And believe it or not, this nut cert right here did not give any trouble. This little fella right here, we're going to have to pull this back off and fix that one and that one. And for some reason, this one. And usually what that means is, is I'll go in, I'll slap a you know, tack weld on it, smooth it out, slap a tack weld on it, run a tap up and down through them, and they're usually good to go. This is why, again, I'm not a huge fan of nut certs, but to fix everything that was there and kind of hide it, which for the most part, it is, you can't tell. Unless you really get up on it, get up on it, you can't tell, it's good to go. One of the reasons that I specifically chose these, I chose Moto Built for a number of reasons, which I said in the last video, 100% American made, you know, support my homeboy Bender and all that good stuff. Anyway, they're on. That's all that matters. And I'm stoked. Finally, this is starting to come to an end. Now for the hard part, which is dealing with the Commonwealth of Virginia to get the, uh, to get a transfer over to a rebuilt title. Fun stuff, right? Now it's just cosmetic stuff. Now it's get rid of Mr. Angry Grill and the, the skull face. I don't know if you can see that. Ooh, I mean, it is Halloween right now. Anyway, there it is. Stoked. Finally, this thing is coming together. Oh, I take that back. I have to put the tail light back in. Sorry. Ooh, big deal. Anyway, I'm just happy right now. This is finally coming to fruition. Clean up my mess and I'm getting out here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cleaning up my mess and getting out of here tonight. It's already quarter to eight on a Sunday. Got to get this bay opened up for tomorrow. Do some normal, normal work. Not a fan of that, but anyway, good times. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe, like, comment. Tell me I suck. Tell me I don't suck. Tell me what you want to see next. Should I one-ton swap it? I don't know if we're going to do that. This is for Mrs. Shop Rat. We'll see. Come on.